Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson. I play Vanessa Clark on One of Us is Lying, and this is Young Entertainment Man. Hi, I'm Allison from Young Entertainment Mag. So nice to meet you. So, oh my gosh, season two of One of Us is Lying. I watched it twice, loved it. Season one, amazing, but you guys just came back with such a bang. The stakes were higher. The characters were more complex. I mean, you guys really blew it out of the water. Amazing. Thank you. And I think one thing that really stood out to us is Vanessa's own episode. I mean, what was that like having your own episode this year? Okay, well, yeah, I mean, it was it was wild, a dream come true. Like I, we don't get the scripts ahead of time. So we're just like, you know, going through the scripts and I'm suddenly I'm getting texts like, did you read it yet? Did you read it yet? And I'm like, it just came out like, no, I haven't <laughs> read it. Why is everyone asking me? Um, and then when I finally read it, it was surreal. Like every page turn, I was like, oh, I'm more me. Okay, I'm in every, oh, okay, I'm in. It was shocking, but it was so fun. It was daunting, but it was amazing. Yeah, no, I can only imagine. And you just find out, like, you don't even know. It just comes in the script. That's crazy. And how did you feel about that? Like, you said it was shocking, but, like, were you nervous? Were you excited? I was all the things. I was nervous. I was excited. I was in disbelief a little bit. I was like, who's made the mistake? Like, I'm not going to ask any questions, but... Yeah, it was, you know, it was so, there's a lot of dialogue, but then again, Vanessa's always talking, you know? So she's always talking at people. So it was really fun to have some conversational, you know, not just talking to my phone. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think we learned about a lot about Vanessa in that episode. Yeah. I think she really, we got to see more about who she was. And I think that was really great to see. And. I mean, I think another thing that we're all talking about is Evan and Vanessa. I mean, OMG. Where did that come from? <laughs> I mean, I, it just seemed like kind of out of the blue, but also it fit perfectly. And that car scene with Martin, when Bronwyn walks out and she sees them, did you have to do any blocking for that? That's actually a funny story. So... Martin and I are very close. We're like best friends, right? So mm -hmm. when I when it came out, I was like, oh, God. you know, because we all I saw was the first scene we had together. And in my mind, it didn't say that she was being flirty. None of that. When we see when we meet in the halls, I was like, underneath this, I think I'm going to be trying, you know, that's my tactic. Like you can be you can be my boyfriend, you know, <laughs> and um then as the show went on, I started to realize, okay, this is real. And that car scene, usually we have some blocking for makeout scenes and it's more technical and we have an intimacy coordinator, but for that scene specifically, I don't know what happened. We were running super late on set. We were like chasing the daylight and I was coming from another scene from another day. So I had to do a whole change and I hadn't seen him all day. Um, and I get to set and they're like, okay, so Kate, just, so get in, get into the car and then we're just going to roll. And I'm just like, oh, okay. So you just want me to mount my best friend and make out with him. Okay. <laughs> that's my job. Sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was crazy. It was so fun though. Like I always do this thing with Marty where like a lot of people in kissing scenes, they'll you know, gum, they'll brush, they won't eat anything gross. But I do the opposite, especially when it's like with a very close friend who I like to joke around with. So, you know, I'll eat olives, like everything he doesn't like, I'll be like coming in hot with the, oh with the stinky breath. <laughs> Cause I know we had just talked to Jess and Chib and they were like, we love the mints. Like <laughs> that's like our obsession. So it's funny to see someone who's the complete opposite. No, that's yeah. right. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's very kind to do if you're, you know, a, a little bit more serious, but him and I have this banter <laughs> where it's just like, you get what you get, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, I think that translated really well on screen. 
And did you have an intimacy coach for any of your scenes? Yeah, we did. We did. We had a great intimacy coach and we kind of do like we tap in and we tap out because yeah, it can get quite awkward for sure. Um, that other scene that we have where we're in the um, sound booth, that was such a crazy scene to learn because there wasn't that much dialogue, but for some reason I was having such a hard time with the, with the dialogue and the, and the blocking of like turning around and talking while kissing and we're in two different scenes, you know? And our director Roxanne was so genius when she said like, the reason it's so hard is because you're in two completely different scenes. He's here to have a makeout session and you're here to spill everything that nobody will listen to you talk about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's like two different mindsets. So yeah. So the blocking in that scene was so important. And then in the car scene with the blocking, I mean, that didn't look easy at all. It was like this small space. <laughs> it was so small and it was so dusty. So oh, anytime no. <laughs> we would like touch anything, we'd be like, Oh, I have dust in my eyes. I have dust in my mouth. It looks so glamorous, but really it's not. <laughs> and then you said that you and Martin, you have like a great friendship offset. Is there anything that you did away from the camera to even help build the chemistry that you would bring on screen? No, not really. Aside from that one scene, we did rehearse quite a bit because it, we were just getting really lost in how to make it believable that we both kind of want to be here and we, there's a lot of beats in that scene. So we've just worked through the physicality of it. Um, but aside from that, we just kind of joked around and I'm very lucky. He's so easy to work with. You like don't have to do any acting when he's working with you. You just kind of like gaze into his pearly white smile and you're like, okay, yeah, I can pretend to be in love with you. Sure. <laughs> no, that's great to hear. I mean, Hopefully, fingers crossed, to season three, we can see more of that at Vanessa. <laughs> and um, so I know, too, with COVID, you have all these new rules surrounding, especially these kissing scenes. Did you have to do anything to prepare in that way? Uh, yeah. So the funny thing is, before the day before my block started. So we do block shooting, we shoot two episodes at a time. So we were shooting five and six and you have four weeks to shoot that out. Um, I got COVID the day before my block was supposed to start. Oh no. So we ended up shooting uh, the entirety of episode six in two weeks, which is really cool and kind of funny and ironic. And um, so yeah, I mean, just make sure you don't have COVID and that's really all you can do. <laughs> we get yeah. tested three times a week, so. Okay, yeah. so it is. it sounds like it's a pretty safe um, like rituals schedule, yeah. Yeah, it's a safe environment too, that everyone makes you feel comfortable. And if you want people to leave and you want a close set, you know, they accommodate you and yeah. And I think now going off of episode six, everyone's talking about your scene in the yacht with Bronwyn and Nate and Stan. And I think that has become such an iconic moment. I mean, bye-bye bestie. <laughs> like, love that line. That um, was actually a line. It, I don't know where that came from. It was not scripted like that. Um, I think, I don't remember what the line was before that, but we have a fake lizard and we have a real lizard. So you rehearse with the fake lizard, you do the wives with the fake lizard, and then you go into the real lizard stuff. And I was doing it the normal way with the, with the fake lizard. And all of a sudden I have this lizard in my hand. And it's so funny because it's, it's just, it's so unrealistic, you know, like I'm holding up a lizard and like threatening its life. And the stakes are so high. Like, I think I'm going to die. I think these guys are going to kill me. And so it just came out. It said, I just said, bye-bye bestie. And our showrunner, Erica, came up to me and she was like, that was hilarious. You need to just say that. I was like, I don't know where that came from. Yeah. No, it was perfect. The delivery, everything about it. And do you think you could break down that entire scene for us? So you're when you were in the closet and Nate wins on the bed 
Were you actually in that closet at the same time? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was so funny because I was like, what would you do if you had to watch somebody have sex while you were in a closet and she's severely claustrophobic. So she's trying not to have a panic attack while watching these people that she hates have sex. <laughs> and she's like, what am I going to do? She also thinks they're going to kill her. So yeah, that was quite interesting. There was like the, there was a bunch of the, there was a part of the scene that was cut out where I was like looking for a place to hide. Um, and I was like trying to get under the bed and like, so it was quite <laughs> funny. Like a lot of it's quite comedic to me. Um, and then she gets in the closet, she's having a panic attack. She's watching these guys. And I truly did. I like opened it a bit and I was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't even want to see that. Like this, is, <laughs> that's worse than this. Um, and then, yeah, the falling out of the closet was hilarious. That our director was so keen on. She was like, this is going to be some physical comedy. You're going to fall out of this closet. And I'm like, define fall. She's like, well, um, you're just going to fall. I mean, there's not much to it. So yeah, I got quite banged up. I was, I was in a lot of tight spaces during the episode. I was falling out of things, running into things. Yeah. Yeah, no, Vanessa had so much like action during that episode. And even when you were rock climbing, like climbing the cliffs to go and find the license plate, were you actually the one climbing or is that a stunt double? Yes, so I do have a stunt double. She's amazing. And it's always so funny when we're on set. I'm just like seeing myself like walk up, like I'm like, who, 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 which one's me? I'm so like, it's so funny. And she's so good at what she does. And I love to do as much as I possibly can. Um, and so they did have her, you know, scaling the cliff, but I was like, well, let me try. And they're like, Sarah, we don't really have, you know, time. I'm like, just let me try. <laughs> so she's always there to either do it or help me out and do it the safest way possible. So yeah, there was a lot of acting, a lot of hand acting, you know, you have to make it look like you're on the side of a cliff. Obviously I'm not on the side of a cliff or am I? Movie magic, I don't yes. want to ruin it. <laughs> no, the magic of editing, it's amazing. And yeah. Yeah. No, that, that was a pretty cool scene. If you could describe Vanessa in three emojis, what would you describe? How would you describe three her? Emojis. Okay, the nail, the nail emoji, the um, sparkle emoji, the three stars. Yeah. And the emoji, the, the um, detective emoji, you know, the one with the. <laughs> we really got to see her detective and journalism skills and I love that that was it was so nice to see these characters too having like almost their own interests and their own life just apart and not just what's the mystery so kind of seeing Vanessa have that that was really cool to see um so like I said before fingers crossed for season three we are so hoping what would be a season three storyline you'd love to see for Vanessa? I think, like you said, she gets really into her journalism side and she finally has somebody who um, really, you know, believes in her, in Evan, and he sees her, her progression and her determination to get to the bottom of something. And I think I'd love to see her tap into the journalism and maybe we have a little Vanessa Tom Preston TV show. Maybe she gets her own TV show, you know? She's a little local celebrity. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I think she, she needs to get more into the journalism. You know, everybody knows if, if there's a scoop, Vanessa's gonna get to the bottom of it. She <laughs> will solve it. Um, and I think it would be really cool to see her join forces with all the different characters and you know squeeze out all the information she can get from them and um 
Yeah, she is a mass master manipulator, that's for sure. She is, and that should be interesting to see if it plays out because at the end we have her close with the murder club. We have her kind of getting ready to like join with them. So yeah. kind of thing where she would take that. And I mean, season one and season two, I feel like they're two. Season one was very setting it up. It was the first book. And then season two, you guys really just dove right in. How was it going from season one to season two in terms of Vanessa and your character? Yeah, I was really um, excited to see a different side of her. I thought, you know, no matter what you're going to, I didn't expect the entire episode, but I, I knew that we had to get to like, why is she like this? Why is she, why can she be so nasty? Why is she so determined? Uh, why does the opinion of other people mean so much to her? Like she needs to be justified through other people. And we did get to see, they, we did shoot some of my family. We had my mom, I have a little brother and we did get to see that. Um, but unfortunately the episode was just so long and so hopefully next season we get to see even more of her family and even more of, you know, why she is the way she is, what her relationship with her mother is, you know, what her morning routine looks like and getting home from school. And um, yeah, I think that's, that was one of the most exciting parts is like not just being a bitch, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you know, nobody's just not nobody, but you know, I, I didn't want to think that she's mean and any character you play, you don't want to just be one dimensional. So, um, I think that was the biggest difference. I think it was easier to get away with being the high school mean girl stereotype in, in season one. And, um, yeah, I, I look forward to that even more in season three. Yeah, and I guess this is just a question that I have off because you just said you had a little brother in the show. Does Is that kind of why they met in like the baby room when they were- That is, you know what I was wondering, I was like, what are, what are people gonna think? Like, okay, and now they're just in this baby room? Like, yeah, so I did, I had a three-year-old little brother and yeah, he got most of the attention. So then oh. again, I was like fighting for attention, fighting for someone to pay attention to me. And um, yeah, that's why there was a baby room. Okay. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because I was like, I wonder if people are going to be like, where are they? That's interesting to know. And I think even how there was that one scene right before when you're climbing the cliffs and you say, Vanessa says to Evan how no one's ever really taken her seriously. And I thought that was such a crucial part to Vanessa's story, even though it's such a small moment that we really didn't know in season one. And I think it kind of brings in for her, like, oh my goodness, like she's not everything that we're seeing. There's so many layers to that. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important, you know, especially in this day and age where everyone is on social media portraying a version of themselves that's not necessarily always authentic to who they are on the day to day. Um, not everything is as it seems, not everything is perfect. Like she shows up to school looking like the, you know, the hallways are her runway. She's wearing six inch heels to school, you know, but like she takes a photo and then surely she takes them off and like, you know, so things are not always as they seem. Everyone has their struggles. I think that that was one of the more important messages I wanted to get across because I struggle with that too. I think everyone does going through their social media and being like, well, I want to be there. I want to look like that. I want to wear that. Um, so yeah, that one, that one was really important. Yeah. I really think as funny and unserious as the show can almost be it can also be such a great topic and it's kind of a good discussion right now with social media being so at the forefront of everyone's lives and I really think as much as you can look at it as it's like a fun drama to watch you can just see 
how much is really these teenagers, the pressure they're actually feeling yeah. in real life. It's so, so true. And it's like, you know, she can freak out about, you know, Bronwyn posting this picture of her and Evan because that can ruin her image. Or she can freak out about what she's wearing to school and how she looks, you know, she has to look perfect. She has that scene where she's looking in the mirror and she's like, look hot, keep your head down and, and try not to get killed before prom. She's also facing, you know, this very real fear of being killed by murderers that are around her every day. Mm -hmm. So that was a really fun thing to play with, you know, the little things that she freaks out about versus the massive things that are her situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so much of this, like even her live feeds that she has, like so many, that's probably a lot of her insecurities and just kind of the way she's projecting them. And one question I do have about those live feeds is when you're filming those, what are you looking at? Is it like a green screen of some sort? Is it the phone? So it's actually really cool. I I joke around with the camera crew and I'm like, am I going to get a credit on this? Like I'm filming with, <laughs> so we have this really cool, I don't know what the app is called, but it's just like an app on this phone and it's like a professional camera. Levels, all the colors, they come in and they fix it up. And then I get to control my, my framing. So for example, on the, on the um, ferry, we are in a green screen and I had to hold it in a specific way where I didn't get the top of the green screen and I had to make it look like, you know, so I have to say these words and, and hold this camera right. And there's also another camera here. And so it's, um, yeah, I'm looking at myself actually doing it, which also oh, wow. helps. Yeah, it also helps. It's like, it's when I'm wearing six inch heels and walking down the hallway and like, there's all this blocking and I'm also <laughs> filming myself and they're like, okay, now you turn the camera. I'm like, okay, that's a lot. <laughs> that's really cool. And it, I mean, it translates so well to the screen too, the, how they incorporate the social media into yeah. the show. It's such like a, it's really good for the viewer. I'm trying to think of the word. Um, it's very like yeah. personalized and interactive almost. Yeah, because you're familiar with it. Like we look at that all the time. I also noticed that like, because I watched it again and I was like, oh, sometimes you miss the little things that like pop up on the screen or, you know, like the comments. So it's good to give it another watch. So everybody, if you've seen it, watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's so much you can just catch while you're doing that. Because even yeah. I was rewatching one of the episodes and I saw like how much detail goes into those Instagram, like when Bronwyn posted the picture of you guys in the car, like they have the comments and they, so it really, there's so much little, many little details in there. Yeah. And what do you think you learned about yourself from Vanessa, whether it be in terms of your acting or in real life? I think in terms of my acting, I learned that I can handle a lot more, you know, dialogue than I, than I thought. We're so lucky to have such good writers. So everyone's like, how do you learn that much? Like, and it's, if it's written well, which it is, it's just, it comes natural. That's what, that's the only thing Vanessa would be saying, you know? Um, and about myself, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely learned that I can walk a mile in six inch heels. <laughs> so all those years of dancing paid off, you know, I can really get a lot done in heels and I learned that I'm also a little bit claustrophobic because <laughs> I'm in these tight spaces and I'm like yeah. having these panic attacks. I'm like, wait, this feels real. Like, so I think I'm a little claustrophobic. Oh my good. I mean, that closet, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I feel like that would have made anyone like, oh my goodness. The it closet was all right because there were grates and it was easy to get in and out of the trunk. Now that was, that was tricky. I was tied up, you know, I didn't want to get in and out of the trunk because it was just a whole ordeal. They shut the lid and one part of it was open, but we had a camera right there. So it really felt like I was trapped in this trunk and like you're banging and banging. And then, I don't know, it, it, that, that was a lot. That one was. 
Yeah, I would think too, as much as you're in character, it's also kind of, it feels so surreal in the moment. And yeah. that, yeah, that's scary. That trunk looked very tight. Um, and you can just tell the whole cast, you guys have so much chemistry together. Everything, you guys look like you have so much fun on set. Do you have any funny stories that happen behind the scene that you'll never forget? It's like we're always just having such a laugh. It's always so fun. And we're goofing around all the time. Like, I mean, season one, one of my favorite memories and funniest moments on set was with Barrett. We were shooting the prom, uh, not the prom, the homecoming. And we were all around the circle while the baby four is dancing. and. Barrett was just like, Barrett's always cracking jokes. He's like the class clown. And he, he, we were, we, they were bringing us water in between takes just because I guess they were dancing. So they needed water. And so we would get water. I don't know. We weren't doing much. We were just standing there laughing at them and we would take water and then they'd be like, okay, quick, quick, quick. We're rolling, we're rolling. So we take water and I still had my mouth full of water and Barrett said something hilarious and I just, all over oh him God. right before and then they're like action and i'm like oh, no, 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 don't say anything. um he was like wearing a tux like so yeah but honestly it's always so fun like all the best moments happen like in the green room or like at lunch when we're all just like exhausted night shoots you know we're just yeah, yeah there's so many now i mean it it was a great season and Everyone really enjoyed it. So again, we're crossing our fingers for that season three. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with us today. And you such great questions and answers. And it was so much fun to learn about Vanessa. And I hope we see a lot more of her in season three. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to Young Entertainment Mag. Mm -hmm.